We were sitting in chairs in a big circle. The entire classroom was ours. There was no one sitting anywhere else except in those chairs in a big circle. And uh, one of the most interesting dynamics was that we, uh, we had to decide who was not going to be sitting in those chairs in the circle. I don't know if you ever did one of those exercises when you were in fourth grade, but when as I was in fourth grade, the teacher said, you have a lifeboat, it holds 10 children, and you have to decide how many people or which of these people get in the lifeboat. But there were 30 of us sitting in the circle. She gave out the challenge. I stood up, and I said, this is how we're going to do it. And I started explaining who would get in the lifeboat. I was in fourth grade. And I was in charge of the exercise. The teacher was shocked. We had a parent-teacher conference. I think I thought that it was to talk about my leadership skills. <laughs> I think my parents saw it differently. When I was in seventh grade, right, we had student council. And we had a problem. We had to figure out what we were going to do because the, the assembly hall, the rally was at the same time as something else that was critical. And I said, this is how it's going to work. And it worked. And in high school and in college, I had no problem being a leader. Some people might call it bossy pants, right? It's this thing of just saying, I can see the space, I can see what's going on, and this is the way it should work. And I've considered 20, 30 different angles, so we all win, right? It's not just like I'm in charge and I win, it's we all win, but this is the way to allocate and arrange things to make a win. Throughout my life, and I just turned 46 a couple days ago, I have not had any problem being a leader. I've had no problem directing other people. I've had no problem figuring out what's the right course of action and how we do it. Do you know what silenced me? You go to yourwebsite.com slash WPAdmin, new post. You got a blank screen. And that shut me up so fast. Oh my God, what do I do? I lost my voice in seconds. I, I've been publicly speaking since I was 16. I have no problem getting in front of you and, and chatting and having a conversation and talking to you about things. Th this is fantastic. And by the way, how many of you have had a good day so far? Yeah. yeah. You're almost done. We're getting to the end of the day. How many of you have already gotten something today that you think this was it? This is why I was here today. Awesome. It means that I could suck and it would still be a worthwhile day for you. <laughs> right? There's still a good reason for you to have been here. I don't have a problem talking with groups of people who've been doing it for years. But when I moved from Northern California to Southern California and I had no people inviting me to speak anywhere, I didn't have a network to say, come speak at this event. I had nothing. A friend said, well, why don't you blog? And so I installed WordPress picked a theme, set it up, added some pages, put some basic copy there, and then I went to write a blog post. And I lost my voice. And it took weeks, months, almost a year to find it again. How many of you have felt like when you're staring at that new post page that you're just scared of saying something that everybody is going to come back to, point at, laugh at, mock, comment on, and all that. How many of you have ever felt that? Okay, here's the good news. On the day that I wrote the first post, nobody came. <laughs> and honest to God, that was good news for me, because I'm like, okay, thank God someone didn't pick it up and go, now this is trash, do not read this, right? Um, I was terrified. So what if, what if I did it wrong? What if I, what, what if I shared my opinion, right, and it was wrong? And here's the thing, right? We get scared in our own head. It's not like someone has ever walked up to us, looked at us, and said, you're ridiculous, and I would like to take you into a room full of people and point out to you how ridiculous you are. 
People don't do that. But in my head, that whole thing played out. And I was terrified. And it's hard cognitively for you to look at a person who's standing on stage doing something that many of you think that's terrifying. Speaking in public terrifies people. And it's hard for you to see someone comfortable talking on stage telling you that they were nervous and stressed because you're like, that, that doesn't line up. But you have to believe me. I'm not lying to you. I was terrified. I had spent a year watching WordPress. I'd gone to two word camps. I'd sat in the back of the room and been silent. Even the first word camp I went to and spoke at, because I knew I could do that, I spoke at, but at lunchtime, I just grabbed my little lunch and I went to a corner and I sat and I ate all alone. Terrified that someone was going to be like, Did, are you the guy that wrote that stupid thing on the blah, blah, blah? <laughs> no, it wasn't me. I don't know what you're talking about. Right? The anxiety and the stress. And so what I want to do in just the few moments we have today is talk through, right, what it took to get me over that hump. For a three-year period of time, I wrote a blog post just about every single day, right? And I couldn't have done it if I hadn't gotten through some of this stuff, and so I just want to spend just a little bit of time walking you through that. Does that make sense? Now, it's late in the afternoon, so we're going to play a little game, right? There's going to be a red and green word on the screen, right? The red one's going to be stop. The green one's going to be start. You can help me. And you can help yourself, you can trust me on this from a cognitive perspective, you will be far better equipped to engage in the material if you participate in the material. So when you see stop, I want you to all yell out together, stop. And when you see start, I want you to all yell out together, start. And you're going to think, this is hard. But hard would have been playing like gospel music and asking you to clap on the opposite beat. This, this is easy. All right? Are we ready? All right. That's right. Stop filtering your inner voice. Here's what happens. Inside your head, you have this monologue that's telling you that the way you speak is fine for the way you speak, but it's not fine for the way you write. So you start writing with a completely different part of your brain. And that's science. That's what happens. The part of your brain that processes the words that you speak is not the same part of your brain that processes the words that you're going to write. And your job is to shut that voice down. It is perfectly fine for you to write. In fact, it will help you to write the way you speak. In fact, the good news is, if you do, other people will read it and hear it the way you speak. And it's conversational, and it's connecting, and it's relational, and it works. But what do you try and do? You try and sound smart. You try and get all the punctuation right. You know what I do? One of the things, see, here's the, here's the deal, right? And, and when you do that, when you interrupt yourself, but you're like, hold on, wait, before that, Here's the thing that's really at heart. No, okay, but before I tell you that, right? Now try writing that. There's going to be one person at least who in the comments says, do you not have an editor? You should prove for your right. How many of you are those punctuation Nazis in the room? Go ahead, raise your hand. I'm going to pray for you right now. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, right? That's what we're scared of, that someone's going to come back and write the note that says, do you even proofread this? You know what I figured out? I found this out. It's not even the slides. I'm just going to give you this tip. If you're looking at a comment that says something like that, you can roll your mouse over a special little icon and click it, and it deletes it. <laughs> and you may think, uh, what kind of editorial dynamics are playing out here on my site? It's your site. I let people come into my house. I let them eat food out of my fridge. But if they spray paint on my walls, I kick them out. <laughs> your website, your comments, your moderation, when someone tells you, I don't, you shouldn't capitalize your titles that way. Delete. <laughs> I don't think you know how to use a comma. Delete. <laughs> You're using way too many exclamation points. Delete. Wait, undelete so I can delete it again. <laughs> Your
you're filtering that inner voice that tells you you're not writing smart enough. You're not sounding smart enough. You're not putting it together in a way that's, you know, you haven't found the perfect words. You're stuttering. So go ahead and stutter. I give you permission. Go ahead and have half sentences. Interrupt yourself. Say, hey, wait, I'm going to tell you a story. But before I tell you that story, let me get you back over here. Even write sentences that are not sentences. You're going to be fine. Because you have to stop filtering that inner voice that's a critic. Start writing. And start writing a lot. Honest to God, I don't care if you publish. Just start writing. Because the truth is, half of the thoughts in your head that are spinning around in your head, they're not going to make sense until you get them out. The part of the process that takes the words from your brain to the text, getting them out of your head is critical. It's part of the journey. What you're thinking is that you have to have the whole thing in your head perfectly lined up before it comes out in a masterpiece. It's not true. So just write, and write again, and write again, and write again. And what you're trying to develop is the cognitive pathways between your thinking and your fingers, and bypassing the critic, and just getting the words on the page. Does that make sense? I told you that I don't care if you press publish. I lied. Press the button. I was super scared the first post I published. I was scared that people smarter than me were going to read it and come back and say you're wrong. There were some times that I wrote opinions that I had on things, trying to be helpful, and people did come back and say, I don't think that's the way I would do it. I would do it another way. And I was like, that's fair. We can let that stand in one of the comments, and people can read it and make a choice. And internally, I can feel like, oh, it's on. <laughs> you want to wage a war? Let's wage this war. I'm going to burn this place down. Oh, wait, it's my own website. That's not a good idea. <laughs> but they're not waging a war. It's a comment. And in fact, it turns out, no one's going to hate you. I did freak out for a second. How many of you know Pippin Williamson? OK, is Pippin in the room by any chance? No, I don't think so. Good, let's talk about him. So. <laughs> Pippin is awesome, okay, and brilliant. And I wrote a post, and Pippin wrote like something that said, well, yeah, I can see why you might do that, but you might also do this. And this is years ago. And he wasn't saying flat out, you're wrong, Chris. He was just saying, here's a, an angle that you might not have thought about. And I appreciated it. And I thought we were still cool, right? And then there was WordCamp San Francisco. And uh, he walked right by me. And I said, hey, hey, Pippin. And he just kept walking. And then I was like, oh, it's like that. <laughs> so I guess maybe you disagreed more than you wrote in the comment. So it's on. I guess people are going to have to start deciding, Lemma or Pippin, Lemma or Pippin, how's it going to go? <laughs> you know what I found out? He has a twin brother. <laughs> that will mess with your mind. <laughs> it took me another six months before it happened the second time. And I'm like, so Pippin and I are cool online, but when we're in person, that dude just... Mm -mm, I'm not talking to Lemma. And then I watched them stand next to each other. And after I scraped my brains off the wall because <laughs> they're like, yeah, we're twins, right? I'm like, oh my God. Shouldn't you wear name tags or something? <laughs> they're identical twins. I, like if I hadn't clarified that for you. Identical, and they wear the same clothes too. You're like, this is messed up. The only way to, Jonathan has the arm of tattoos. And when Pippin puts a whole sleeve of tattoos on, we're over. It's game over. You will not know who's who. The truth was, right, we disagreed kind of partially on the comment, and it wasn't the end of the world. But I was terrified, right? And then traffic started coming. I started getting excited. Ooh, look, I called my wife into my office. I showed her Google Analytics. I was looking every day. Google Analytics, there it is, right? I had gotten to 100 page views in a day. I'm like, come here, come here, come here, check this. OK, so this is every single person, well, my mom and 99 other people <laughs> who have looked at this post. Look at that. Look at the curve. It's been going up. I hit 100 people today. 
And she said, don't worry, it'll come back down. <laughs> She's there to ground me. Start by copying from others. There's a chance that you're going to read this and go, what kind of BS is that? Wynton Marsalis is a classically trained and incredible jazz musician. And if you were to read or watch his interviews, even without an instrument, he can verbalize with his mouth every note of Grover Washington, Miles Davis, any other musician. Because he plays the sax, and he said, well, in an interview, he said, what, what I was learning was I was learning how other people did it, the greats. And I was figuring out what they were doing, and I was taking it all in, and I was doing it just like them. I was doing it just like them until I figured out my path. There is absolutely nothing wrong with going and finding someone whose writing is the way you want to be. Not want to be like poser, like, I just, I wish I was as good as that guy. I just want to be that guy. I, some, how many of you are developers or designers? Yeah, okay. How many of you have ever had that client who's like, I want that exact website, but just change the colors, right? Yeah, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about looking at the people you respect and watching what they're doing and deconstructing it and trying to do the same in your own voice, trying to copy until you find your own way. One of, the things, one of the things that we do um, at, at my house is we sing a lot. I sing, my wife sings, my kids sing. We just love music. And when I was growing up as a kid, I would sing songs, and I would sing just like the artist, right? I love Stevie Wonder. I can do a mean Stevie Wonder. If we drink enough tonight, I'll just sing for you, but that's not going to happen today or right now. But I love Stevie Wonder. And then eventually someone said, you know, it's impressive that you can do this voice and this voice and this voice. What's your voice sound like? It was a casual conversation, but it's like a punch in the gut. Because you realize you've been copying everyone, and you've been learning from everyone, but you haven't figured out your own path. And you're like, i, I got to figure out my own way. So this says start. It doesn't say end. Start. By copying what other people are doing, learning from them, figuring it out. I was never going to be the guy that wrote the post that said, here are five WordPress themes for photographers. I had no interest in it, and so I didn't want to do that. But if we want to talk about writing an inspirational article that encourages someone who feels like maybe they could, but they're not sure if they might be able to do something, and I want to come alongside and help them on the journey, let me go look at other people that are writing that way. And let me go figure out how to do it. I'm never going to be Seth Godin. I'm never going to write a 300-word post that makes you go, oh, my God, i got to share this with 7,000 friends of mine. That's not me, right? But... I could burn 30 days like nobody's business monitoring membership plugins and writing at, at until you were dying, going, get done with this damn review. Oh, I can do this, right? And there's a handful of people that are going to read this and go, this was really helpful to me. And I'm like, that's my thing. I can do that. I can dig into it and look at it from not only the technical side, but the business side. I found my voice in that. And as long as it's being helpful and there's a story component, <coughs> I can pull that off. Start by copying from others. Stop blending in. The reality of the situation is that every single one of you looks different, except for Pippin. <laughs> you wear different clothes. Your hair is different. You have different backgrounds, different experiences different families, different stories. So why would you think that the ultimate end goal is for all of us to sound alike and be alike and do things like everybody else? My fundamental belief of the world is that it is like a puzzle, and every one of you is holding a puzzle piece. And each piece is different and unique. But some of you have taken that puzzle piece and stuck it in your pocket for whatever reason. And you've decided, I don't want to put my piece on the board. 
My wife and I, we love puzzles. We were on a cruise, because we love cruises. We were on a cruise, and we were up in the library. I think we were the only two people under 55 in the library on a cruise ship. But we loved that library, and we had a puzzle out. And we were doing it. We got all the way to the end of the puzzle, and one piece was missing. Now, this is the ship's puzzle, so all sorts of people go through it every week. And we were working on the puzzle. We got to the end, one piece missing. I cannot tell you how frustrating it is to be almost done with a puzzle and have one piece missing. Imagine how frustrating it is to have all the different people in the world writing different things, but your voice is missing because you took it and you shoved it in your pocket and you said, no, 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 I don't, I don't like my voice. And you put it away. And you think that the only one you're hurting or the only one that's having a cost to this is you. But the puzzle hurts, and the people who are trying to get the bigger picture miss out as well. You're unique. I don't know all of you, but I guarantee you in 15 minutes of talking, I would find out what's unique about you. In 15 minutes of talking, I would find out that you are so different, and you're doing some things that are so interesting, that I'd follow up by asking, are you writing about this anywhere? No, 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 no. But you're unique. And you need to stop blending in. You need to stop writing like everybody else. You need to stop assuming that your voice isn't needed. I know that the world is out there telling you there's way too much crap, too much noise, too many posts, the fake news articles and all sorts of other crap that you're like, yeah, I don't want to add to that. I'm not suggesting you write just to throw more crap out in the world. But you're unique. Your story is unique. And that voice needs to be heard. And the truth is, it's easy. You just do it. If you start looking back, you will find, if I were to ask any one of you, I would say, hey, what are the five best moments in your life? What are the five moments in your career, in your life, in any part of, any, any aspect of the way your life has lived out? Five moments where you were on a high. Five moments where you thought, you can't pay me to do this. I love this. I can't believe I get paid while I'm doing it. Or I can't believe this is happening to me. Five moments where you are filled with energy, not devoid of it. Five moments that you're at your all-time high. Write down the five and tell me what connects them. And you'll find the threads of what's important to you, what matters to you. You'll find the threads in your own story. You don't need anyone's help because you've already lived it. You've already had moments where you've thought, this is amazing. You just haven't put it together. So you have to look back to find it. Stop tracking all the stuff. Google Analytics is there. There's all sorts of other stuff there. Stop. Your objective is not 100 hits in a day. Your objective is not how much money you make off an affiliate link. Your objective is none of those things. Your objective is to find your voice. Because when you find your voice, you can use it. You can use it on your blog, and you can use it in real life. Start collecting frames, right? These are shortcuts. If I'm going to tell you a story, if I'm going to lay out a structure, have a composition, a notion. Like, in one, one of my frames is, tell a story about a problem. Once I've articulated the problem, highlight some of the attempts I've made to solve it. After three attempts that didn't work, highlight a new discovery that I didn't know was part of the problem. Then expose the solution. Highlight how it worked. Wrap up the story. That's a structure. It's like Mad Libs. Now fill in the details. Do you know why we watch movies? How many of you go to the movies or watch movies on TV at home with your spouse? Okay, how many of you have a super annoying and intelligent spouse like mine who after 10 minutes predicts not only who the bad guy is, but how it all works? Yeah, I hate you. Because I want to be entertained for the whole duration of the movie. And my wife after 10 minutes is like, ah, oh, this is the guy, this is the bad guy. And you're like, we don't know that. Until the end when she's like, see, I told you. And I'm like, ah. Oh. But the reason she's able to do it is because most of these movies work off frames, they work off structures. And you go, okay, I can figure out 
what this is. What are my structures that I can use to write faster? It took me 1,200 posts, six to nine months, finding four different frames to get a handle on my voice. I'm not telling you this is going to be fast. But I will tell you that I spent a couple years writing. And then I found my thing. I found out the way I did it and what made me unique and the way I worked. And the net result of that was I was able to have greater impact and greater influence and have the, do the things I wanted to do because of it. It's worth putting in the effort. So the small nag of insecurity, that's silent for a reason. It's in your head, but it's silent. And you have to learn to ignore it. And your voice, that's not silent. It's designed to be heard. That's why it's vocal. I don't know if you've ever seen this quote. It says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people will not feel insecure around you. I couldn't say that any better. I will post these slides so that you have access to these resources, but there's a whole bunch of resources that will help you, including three or four posts that I wrote at chrisnumma.com on 40 blog topics that you might want to use if you write about X or Y or Z, if you're an agency or an entrepreneur. These are topics that will help. I also wrote a post about frames that might help. My name's Chris Lemma. I'm the new VP of Products and Innovation at a company called Liquid Web. And you can find me on Twitter at, at Chris Lemma, and of course on my blog at chrislemma.com. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I think we have some time for questions, and I think we have a microphone in the middle of this row. Is that right? Hey, Chris, that was actually awesome. Thank you. That's very good. That's very good. Um, the things that you said were 100% accurate when it comes to finding your voice. Because I'm a photographer. I've been a photojournalist for many, many years. And I teach a lot of photo workshops. And I always tell people, look, a cliche is not a cliche until you get out of your system. Your own style. But this is my question to you. So in photography, the more you copy people, that's good because you get it out of your system. But if you keep looking and looking, you actually miss your own style. It took me five years to find my own style. It was finally when I decided, I'm not going to look for a style anymore. Screw this. I just love taking photos. This is it. Within a month, I had someone say, hey, man, I saw a photo of you in the paper, and it was awesome. I knew it was yours because it was your style. I'm like, I have a style? I almost cried. So the question is, is it the same when you're writing? Do you, if, you, if you seek too hard for it, don't you, don't you have, lose the possibility of finding it because you're looking too hard? Or does it happen? I don't know. I'm not a writer. I'm a photographer. So I think what happens is... I'm going to take in, it off as in, in writing, I think what happens is you see, oh, I like the way they did that, right? I like the way they did that. And you start putting it together. And it's the putting it together, right? If, if you were making... I, I make a secret sauce for spaghetti. My secret sauce is half the jar of Prego sausage and half the jar of Prego meat sauce. That's just for us. Okay? <laughs> tell, tell no one else, right? But that's my secret sauce. And it's my particular combination. And if you were to put three quarters of this jar and one quarter of this jar, totally different flavor. Right? So part of what happens when you're finding your voice, you're taking different things that you respect, that you like, you're pulling it together. It's the combination and how you put it together that starts helping you find that voice. Thanks for asking that great question. What's the next one? Hi, Chris. First of all, I wanted to say I saw this topic and uh, my thought was, oh my gosh, like 
you kind of hit it head in the head. Like, why do people need to get up and feel like they need to blog just to talk and hear their voice and, you know, get out there? But I think your comment about the puzzle piece and the fact that we really do all have something different to contribute was really valuable. Um, so I'm thank you for that, first of all. My second, my question is why, or I should say how, when you started and you started to face challenges, how did you overcome that challenge of, or did you even encounter that challenge of, why should I continue doing this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, anything, to do anything well, to do anything that's serious is going to take work. And one of the first tricks, I think, is just the routine itself, right? The routine, all of a sudden you build up this trend like, oh my gosh, I've been blogging for 30 days in a row. And so that's, a, it, not for everyone, but for me, that's a motivator, like, I don't want to break it now. So you create that little internal drive. That's enough to get you past minor hurdles. It's not enough to get you past the big ones, right? Someone writing something negative about your post, that's a stupid post and he's an idiot. Oh, no trend is going to make me feel great about that, right? So then you need something else. But what's really interesting is if you're helping other people, and I'm not saying that's everyone's tone and voice, but if you're helping other people, some of these people start coming back and telling you the result of your work. <coughs> so within about six months, someone came up and said, you wrote a post about how to do this kind of site with e-learning. I didn't know a thing about how to do it. I was on the phone with a client. Now, none of you guys do this. I was on the phone with a client. They were asking about this, and I did a Google search, and I found your article, and I read it, and I just, I basically recited it to him, and I got the job. <laughs> and my first statement was, that is awesome. Way to go. My second statement was, do you need my address for the affiliate check? My, my third, right, my third was, um, did, did you get the job? And he's like, I did. And, it, you know, it, it kicked off our business. And you're like, that's, that's awesome. And that story fueled me for another couple weeks. At one point, I had a guy come up to me, give me a big hug. I had been blogging now for about a year and a half. Give me a huge hug. And he said, I want to thank you. We were down on our luck, and I had lost my job and my apartment, and it was me and my daughter in my car. And I didn't know what to do next, and I, I, I don't know how I got to your blog, but I started reading these posts, and I started teaching myself, and now I have a job, I have a new apartment, my daughter and I are, are, are living great, and I'm, I've been doing WordPress development now, and it's, it's because of you. Oh my God, there is no comment on my blog that is going to stop me from writing for the next six months off that one alone, right? So part of it is got you got to get that feedback loop going where you're hearing people's stories, and that's what at least fuels me. Thanks for asking that question. What's next? Well, Chris, uh, congratulations on the new post. Happy belated birthday. Thank you for inviting us to this group therapy session. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Um, so I, along the therapy lines, I do have this question. With so much of a pressure to have to create content for your business, I mean, content creation, content creation, um, it is painful to write. You know, my degree is in English, but I hate to write. I hate to produce content. Um, I'd be prolific. I'm going to stop had... you right there. Yeah. I totally disagree with you. Preach. I totally disagree with you. You don't Preach. hate to create content. You're talking right now. You just created all that content right now, just now, on your own, without thinking about it. So saying you hate creating content meant you would have sat in the chair and said nothing. Good, you good love certain kinds of content and you hate certain kinds of content, right? But you don't hate creating content. Here's the truth. You run a business, someone calls your business and wants to ask you, can you help their business? Do you say, I would like to tell you about that, but I can't because I hate creating content? <laughs> I bet you don't. I bet you answer the question. So here's my challenge. Don't create content that you think you need to create even though you don't think you need to create. Create the content that's useful to you. And so if you're running a business and you have people calling you and asking questions, get those questions, write them down, write your answers. The answers that you would verbalize anyway. Because that's not the same feeling when you're creating that content. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Now, what was your real question? I know you had a real one. I no, just stopped that, you. That was a real question. She's going to pay your uh, bill. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was a really good lecture. Uh, I just wanted to add that my community, bloggers, I really love to teach them because they can see their spine. I'm telling them right each week because they're in the spine, they have self-esteem, and wonderful things happen to them. Absolutely. About the voice, 
I have four blogs because after one and a half year, I have a different, you know, something to write about. So my question is, when? <laughs> Most of my, you know, customers and bloggers, they're saying, oh my God, I have no time. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling them, so stop watching TV. Because well, they, for you know, sure. If so, uh, we all stopped watching TV, we could write books like every week. I mean, it's <laughs> ridiculous how much time people spend on watching TV. But here's, here's the thing. Um, I take a shower every day. I know some people that run every day. I know some of you drink coffee every day, right? <laughs> I don't know if someone's clapping the coffee one or the shower one, but either way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it, right? Um, what I have found is really helpful, attach writing to a habit that is already happening. And I, I said daily, but the truth is, if you do something once a week, attach your writing to that. It doesn't matter, but attach it to something you're already doing. Because for example, if you get up and you go run every morning, and then you say, okay, I'm gonna get up half an hour earlier, write, and then run every morning, or I'm gonna run, and before I shower, I'm gonna write every morning. Connecting habits is a, is a shortcut to learning that adoption cycle for you. Thank you. Thanks. How are we doing on time? Hi, Chris, awesome talk. Thank um, you. Yeah, I was, you actually kind of already, you answered my question, but maybe you have another answer to it. I was gonna ask you about good strategies to do that get started thing. And I heard one that's worked kind of well for me a couple weeks ago and we had Confab ED, Higher Ed here. And it was focused writing, which is just set your timer for 15 minutes, you know, like, like you take a shower, f find yeah. the time, and just do nothing but draft. Yeah. For, you know, for 15 minutes. And the first time I tried it, I kept going for 15 more. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah so I, 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 I don't know if I you find, know any other strategies. I find strategies. that's a little dangerous and, and crazy because I did that once with exercising. I went to the gym and I did 10 minutes and then I decided to do 25 minutes more. <laughs> and I haven't been back for about 10 years. <laughs> I, so I just be careful when you overdo it like that. I don't recommend that okay. you overdo it. Don't stress yourself out. But, but yes, 15 minutes of writing could be perfect, right? Um, one of, the other, one of the other tactics or techniques there is um, to preload a lot of uh, content that you may want to write. So um, if you're running a business, right, you're getting support tickets all the time, you're getting questions all the time, so write them down somewhere else. And, and then you just go, okay, these are the questions that when I have the time to sit down and allocate an hour, I'm just going to answer as many questions as I can, and I'm going to just write it down. And so you're creating content, you're creating useful content, but you're also doing it with a structure that you already know how to manage. Yeah, last question. All right, uh, uh, thank you very much, first of all, for the energetic uh, presentation. So uh, I just want to let you know I'm from uh, um, Pakistan and I'm community lead for Pakistan WordPress community. So a lot of people, dozens of people were watching you live over there and I got a few questions. It's a couple of questions I got on my mobile they want me to ask from you. So uh, apologies in anticipation. And uh, first of all, there's a question from Meher, and she wants to ask that, uh, uh, can you find the balance between being true to yourself as a writer, but also capture the market? Means, uh, she says, is that fine if you include some marketing uh, fluff to remain relevant, or does great writing along speak, speak for itself? Always be helpful. If in being helpful, I tell you that one of the best tools you could possibly use in your writing is Yoast SEO plugin. I'm not marketing, I'm being helpful. But if I just say, <laughs> they're here, <coughs> uh, I would ask for a commission, but he gives away for free. So, he's a dork. Okay, so, um, if, 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 if I'm being helpful, okay, I can share that message and there's no issue, right? Because it's clear, I'm, I, I don't have an agenda. Now some people will still accuse you of an agenda, but I don't care about that, I go to sleep at night fine. But if I know that I'm being helpful, I'm writing for that purpose, right? Then I don't have a problem and I don't think of it as marketing, right? Um, when you're trying to do marketing and then you use a little hook of helpful but it's mostly marketing, people read that pretty quickly and they just throw it away. So that's content not worth writing. Did, did you have 16 more questions or do we have no, just No, this one, more? the last one question yeah, and al uh, already I've got an answer for the, another one. So the last question is uh, from a guy, he's, uh, his name is Nadeem and he wants to ask, like uh, he was quite reluctant on writing something but he says that trust me that I have started writing uh, some philosophy for my product. This is the very first time after your talk. So he says that uh, uh, I just want to make sure that uh, I don't have a good vocabulary. 
I don't have good words, but if I make such sort of broken uh, philosophy for my product, my customers would not uh, gone away from me. Um, everybody will find someone else in the world who is more eloquent than them. That cannot be a reason for not working on your voice. You write what you write. Tomorrow you'll write better, the day after that better. You will learn to think better if you write more. And the more you write, the better thinking will turn into better writing. And that's awesome. But you can't stop your voice because you're suddenly not some graduate student who knows how to do perfect academic writing. Just write from where you are. And if you're being helpful, most people will see that and welcome. I mean, my dad has, he's still, right? My dad has this heavy Latino accent. When he's being helpful, people understand him. When he's yelling, no one understands him, right? <laughs> you just got to choose to be helpful. Thank you very much.